Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now the ANC Youth League's new president says young people must make up half of the ANC's caucus in the National Assembly. Now Colin Malachi spoke to media earlier today at the conference this weekend where, where he won and was elected unopposed. ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa urged the Youth League to lead the young people of South Africa. So now let's uh, get some insight from political analyst Lukanyo Vanga. Uh, he joins us now uh, virtually. Thank you Lukanyo for your time here on ENC. Let's just talk about what he said in terms of a 50% representative of the youth in the National Assembly as well as in the provincial leg legislature. He's one MP. There's also Fasia Hassan, um, Katra, etc. Well, do you think they'll be able to achieve this by uh, the time that they want to achieve it in terms of the representative of the youth? Good afternoon, Maseko. Um, thank you for inviting me. It's quite a tall ask that he has put for, for himself as an objective of the ANC Youth League uh, newly elected leadership. The current, um, the current target that they have is about 30% youth representation in all the leadership structures of the ANC, and they have failed dismally to be able to deliver that so far. As you've enumerated now, it's only himself, um, Carl, and I think a few other people that make up those that are under 35 in Parliament as we speak. So there's an underrepresentation of youth as we speak in Parliament, below the the 30 percent, way below the 30 percent. You look at um, the the um, the cabinet of the country. I don't think there's a single person that's under the age of 35 that sits in our cabinet. So to try and transform that to 50 percent of uh, people that are youth who are under the age of 35 is quite a tall ask, and he he needs to be up um, to that challenge for him to, to, to deliver um, on that particular promise. But it is a desirable uh, situation. The country mm -hmm. is made up of mostly young people. Um, I think there's about 54% of the country's population is young people. However, there's other problem with young people that is political apathy. About 85% of young people are not registered to even vote in this country so they don't yeah. participate in the public life. Um, of South Africa, and as a result, you don't see them in the political leadership and institutions that lead the country. It's because of that political apathy. So he needs to rejuvenate public participation of young people in leadership structures for him to be able to meet the target of 50% of young people in leadership structures. Mm, and as you speak about uh, voter apathy, I actually looked at uh, some of the visuals we were playing there and I thought, and I saw uh, Malusi Kika, but for those of you who don't know, this man actually served as the Youth League president during Nelson Mandela's time as uh, the president of the ANC. But looking at it, before we speak about that, the first female deputy president in the ANC Youth League, something that the mother body has failed to do in the years of the ANC's existence. The only time we saw a female deputy was Pumzile Mlambonuka, and uh, at that time she she was deputy president of the country, not necessarily someone who was voted in um, as at the elective Congress of the ANC. So, uh, you know, the mother body could learn something at least from the young people. Uh, yes, but even if we celebrate that, we do lament and say it's not enough. Marcel, for 79-year history of the ANC Youth League, they've never had a female president before. Um, so we do celebrate that they, for, in the 79-year history, now have a female deputy president. But there seems to be that glass ceiling of, of the highest uh, rungs of leadership in the ANC Youth League that is yet to be shattered by women to be able to get into into that position of of eventually president and leader of the of of the um, of the organization but there's also other demographic challenges uh, pointed out by a journalist today that only one indian person and only mm. one kind of person made it into the 40 member nec leadership structure there uh malachi missed an opportunity to speak directly to challenges that afflict the organization with regards to being able to reflect the demographics of the country. He said that is absolutely fine as long as it's a democratic process that those are elected there. And that's quite condemnable and we should condemn that as society because the ANC as a mother body faced that challenge as well when it emerged from Nazareth with an underrepresentation of the um, of the demographics of the country. And that's why they then went on to co-opt people into that NEC structure so that it can 
more diversity and of more inclusion in these structures. And I think that's something that the ANC Youth League needs to look into um, as this NEC, that they're able to co-opt some uh, more people into that structure. People from the LGBTIQ community, people mm. from other demographics that are underrepresented, such as the Indian, white, and colored communities. And I think mm. they need to do that quite urgently. Yeah, Lukang, I find it very interesting that you say that because I picked it up. He said the ANC is not a multi-racial uh, political party. It's a non-racial political party. Semantics, isn't it? Like uh, their former president used to say, innuendos. Uh, but Lukang, my last question to you is with regards to the rich history of the presidency of the ANC, you know, uh, starting with your Lembede in the 1940s all the way uh, through to um, where we find it today. But of course, I don't know what you made of um, Malachi speaking. Uh, so uh, negatively about uh, Julius Malema. I know that political parties, especially opposition political parties, speak about each other in, a, in, in an ill way. But is this a matter of the fact that uh, the ANC Youth League last saw its most active president in terms of its mandate to make their leader look good in the national government election? The last time we saw that was with um, Julius Malema. Could we look at it that way? Yes, so quite a storied history, as you're saying, of uh, luminous um, uh, ANC uh, presidents. The reason why he speaks like that is because there's already been this comparison between mm. himself and Julius Malema, and he's preempting that there will be those comparisons, and therefore he's trying to um, either lament or in somehow downplay the, if, the, the, the stature of Julius Malema within the, the history of the ANC. League. And it's quite mistaken because there is a growing acceptance within the ANC itself that having expelled Julia Malema was a mistake that the organization made and they should have rather kept him and the one point something million people that went on to support him um, as when he founded the EF. So he needs to just step away from the shadow of Julius Malema and remove himself from those comparisons. He needs to imprint his own set of values, his own set of principles and leadership styles into the ANC so that he doesn't become a Julius Malema like that he doesn't try and mimic the leadership styles of Julius Malema. He must mm. imprint his own um, identity within the ANC Youth League so that it becomes a calling uh, Mal Malachi ANC Youth League that we mm. can also reflect back on in the years to come. Otherwise, we'll just always treat him as a second-rate Julius Malem. Mm. And it doesn't help that they're from the same province. But thank you very much for speaking to us and giving us your insights. Political analyst Lukang Yovan was speaking to us there. And I wonder if this youth league is strong enough to make the ANC come out tops uh, after next year's national government elections.